have you ever considered how it was possible to tune a lyre in antiquity without a tuner or a tuning up? Did every musician in ancient Athens or the rest of the world have such a trained musical ear to be able to tune perfectly? And what about the exact notes? Was everyone able to identify a C or a G straight out of thin air? So what is the secret of the ancient Greeks for the perfect tuning? According to several ancient sources, including Aristoxenus elements of harmony, Greeks extensively relied on the use of two specific musical intervals while tuning, the intervals of fourths and fifths. They considered both of them, along with the eighths, to be consonant, meaning that they have a natural, soothing sound. Let's say that when you hear a fourth or any consonant musical interval, you get a specific feeling. Uh, it brings you joy, it's something natural, it puts a big smile on your face, it is like looking at the sun. On the other hand, we have dissonant music intervals such as the seconds or the sevenths which cause us tension and desire to hear them being resolved to a consonant interval. Let's begin. Let's begin with a small experiment. Our ears recognize the desire, this desire. For example, G desires go to C. This desire gives us the feeling that in note C something is closing, something is ending, something is resolving. Like that. So, La, Si, Do, we have G and C. G, A, B, C, G, C. So, from the note G to note C, we have a fourth, a perfect fourth. Similarly, when we begin with note C, there is a desire to move to a higher G. Once again, we get the feeling that something is closing, something is ending, something is resolving. And here we have a fifth. According to Aristoxenos, these intervals, the fourths and the fifths, were used by the ancient Greeks to tune their lyres. In our example, a seven string lyre here, there is one string that somehow divides the instrument into two equal parts. I refer to the fourth string. It divides the lyre into two equal parts, so we have the first part from string one to string Four, and the second part from string 4 to string 7. In that specific lyre, our lyre, that string, the fourth one, is the note C. What is the ancient way then of tuning our lyre? Greeks were relying on Nenavlitis, a music player of the Avlos a type of ancient flute, to take that C note for their fourth string. The Avlitis produced a specific note, C, let's say based on his specific Avlos. Another Avlitis living in a different city or place should produce a different note C of a slightly higher or lower pitch. Don't forget that many of those players uh, were actually the luthiers of their own instruments too. What matters is that the lyre player was tuning his fourth string by taking the note C from an avlitis. According to Aristoxenos, the lyre player from this fourth string, remember, already tuned to note C, was going one fourth lower to tune his first string. So, a fourth interval lower for note C is the note G. So now we have two strings tuned. The fourth string to note C and the first to note G. 
Then based on the first string D, which is already tuned, we will tune uh, our fifth string. And this time we go a fifth interval higher. So for note D, we end up to note D. So the general rule here is when we go lower, we use the fourth interval. And when we go higher, we use the fifth. Like that. Therefore, based on our fifth string, we will tune our second string. Hmm? This time we go a fourth interval lower. So from note D, we end up to note A. Next, from the second string, we will tune our sixth string. So we go a fifth interval higher. So from note A, we go to the note E. Then, yes, you found that out, from the sixth string, we will tune our third one. So we go a fourth lower from note E to note B. And finally, from our third string, we will tune our seventh string, the last string of our lyre that isn't tuned. So we go a fifth interval higher and from note B, we end up to note F. And if now I will move back a fourth, I will end up to C. So let's have a pause here for a while before moving any further. If you are familiar with modern music theory, you probably already have realized that instead of an F, we need to have an F sharp. And why is that? Because the fifth interval of the third string, uh, the fifth of note B is an F sharp. In Western music, we are using the perfect fifth, the diminished, segmented, but this is something we can talk about in another video. If we want to stick with what the Greeks were probably using, and more specifically what the theory of Pythagoras says, then we need to have all the natural notes in a row, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G and A. We don't have any sharps. On the other hand, if we want to stick with what Aristoxenus wrote in his monumental work, The Element of Harmony, about the desire of its note to resolve to another one, then yes, we need to tune the last string on F sharp. Let's hear how both of them sound. This is the F natural and this is the third string, the note B. Do we have that feeling, that certainty that the note B is actually being resolved on a natural F? Let's change now that natural F to F sharp. What about now? F sharp B. By tuning my last string on F sharp, I get definitely the feeling that note B is actually being resolved perfectly on the F sharp. So it's up to you if you want to use the natural F or the F sharp. I suggest you stay with the natural F if you're a beginner or an intermediate player and then gradually add sharps into your lyre playing. Closing that small parenthesis, what we actually have now a perfectly tuned Tencent Lar in our hands, following the exact procedure that the ancient Greeks were using, based exclusively on two music intervals, the fourths and the fifths. And to avoid seeing you looking desperately for an ablitis to give you that note C for your middle string, wait a minute, we don't actually need an ablitis every time we want to tune our lyre. A fellow musician is more than enough no matter what instrument she plays, she can lend us that note C we so desperately need. Or use a tuner or a tuning up, it is even more simple. So this is how the ancient Greeks, according to Aristoxenos, used to tune their lyres based solely on the desire of its note to resolve to another one. If you want to find out more about the ancient lyre playing, the ancient music theory, different playing techniques, and get access to dozens of ancient and modern melodies specially subscribed to be played on a lyre, then enroll to lyreacademy.com. 
we have a series of core lessons 100% for free to get started before heading to our premium courses that will help you master your lyre playing pretty quickly. Ha, 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 ha.